let's understand the ramifications of the same uh, with Feroz Aziz of Anand Rati Wealth. He joins us now on the show. Uh, Feroz, always a pleasure having you with us. Um, I think this will sort of set a precedent in many ways because it's the first financial firm that's actually going, going to go into IBC and there's public money as well involved, 6,000 crore rupees. So what exactly does it mean then for public investors? We get this question as well very often that, oh, I have bought bonds of DHFL. Uh, what will happen? Will I get my money back? Because interest has stopped. Anyway, there's a moratorium on their payment. So how are you looking at this entire thing and how essentially would bankruptcy hit in you know, our viewers as well? See, I think retail investors have participated in three different vehicles uh, to invest. The unfortunate part is the other, the, it's not just 6,000 crores. Yeah. Uh, because there is NCDs which uh, people would have bought from the marketplace yeah. uh, which is also going to be DHFL dependent mm. and uh, whatever mutual fund investments have also come through the retail yes, investor. Yeah. So all these three vehicles uh, to fund the loan book uh, of DHFL has happened. Now all these have a different uh, connotation mm. or, or implication from a risk standpoint. Mm. Uh, fixed uh, deposits which you generally do with corporates incidentally in this case DHFL mm. are not secured. Yeah. Uh, they are unsecured loans. Unsecured mm. loans without an insurance, unlike in a bank fixed deposit, where mm. there's a one lakh rupee insurance, uh, which is which comes along with a bank fixed deposit. Mm. The corporate insurance uh, FDs don't come with that insurance, and it's very important uh, for every investor who invests in debt to understand if the company goes into a, a, a bankruptcy or a, or a insolvency kind of a situation. When is your turn to get the money? If you are right in front in the queue, the probability of getting the money is that much higher. This is called a uh, hierarchy of liquidation. Yeah. Uh, so I think unfortunately secured uh, debt comes above uh, the unsecured fixed deposits. So more often than not, the third people in the queue, uh, first is employees and government and taxes. The second mm. is secured debt. The third is unsecured debt. Uh, so most of these liquidations, when they go through the process of liquidation, uh, the third person in the queue ideally doesn't has to take a large portion of his monies uh, to be lost. Uh, so that's the problem with fixed deposits. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, that's the bad news. But NCDs are secured, so the propensity for them to pay back a reasonable portion, or uh, in different cases, uh, the proportions are different, uh, but they come higher uh, in the liquidation process. Well, yeah, uh, NCDs will be right on the top over there, uh, secured creditors, but public FDs uh, will be coming a little lower. There you have it. Number three, actually, on the in the hierarchy, unsecured financial uh, depositors. Uh, now, Firoz, this begets the question that does it mean that you know, when, you, when you're putting your money in a corporate deposit, like you mentioned, a bank fixed deposit, you have the entire DICGC. In the worst case scenario, that steps in and, you know, ensures it to the extent of 1 lakh. Now people are saying extend it to 5 lakhs and 10 lakhs, but of course we are, I think, a far fetched from that. But yeah, does it mean that corporate deposits are inherently risky because of the fact that there's this basic credit event risk or concentration risk that it brings about? Yes, they are. They are uh, significantly more risky. Uh, why are they significantly more risky? Because most people, if you saw how many fixed deposits of different corporates do they end, end, end up buying, might be two, three, four. It will never be 50 different deposits you would have created. Yeah. And even if you ended up creating it, it's going to be a logistical nightmare uh, to ensure uh, that you know all of them, when are they giving their interest, what's the tax payment to be done on those. Uh, so point one, corporate fixed deposits are significantly more on risk. Uh, why? Because they are unsecured, one. Second is the number of fixed deposits you will end up buying is going to be significantly lower uh, than the number of fun, uh, uh, people you will lend to through a mutual fund. Now to substantiate that claim which I am making, if you go back in time, three years, uh, even mutual funds have had large exposures to DHFL and ILNFS yeah. and some other companies which went through some degree of speed breakers in the last one year. But if you still see a three year return of a debt fund, even a credit risk fund, uh, which has, has some credit risk fructification, is about 5 to 6% uh, mm. in the worst situation. Uh, so point I'm trying to make is diversification uh, becomes a very, very important armory uh, to be used in debt uh, to mitigate your risks of uh, insolvencies. Yeah, it's not a mutual fund where you know you have your uh, money spread across various other instruments. I mean, it's you're literally just buying one company's debt and that could be a bit problematic. But you know, Feroz, in your vast experience, has it just been in the one in the last one year that we've seen these speed breaks in the form of DHFL and RNFS? I mean, historically, what I want to understand is that does this happen very often? These kind of severe credit, uh, you know, defaults. Uh, they don't happen very often. Uh, I think what was unique about the last one year's defaults, which has made uh, big headlines, is because AAA rated companies have gone bankrupt. Yeah. 
you've had episodes like Amtec Auto, uh, JSPL, hmm. all these where mutual funds had invested. Hmm. But triple A rated companies going bankrupt have a large propensity to take a couple of other big companies down together. Uh, mm. If you see spillovers of ILFS to marginally DHFL, there was correlation between credit risk and mm. DHFL creating some problems for other lenders, especially in the banking side, uh, I'm sure uh, you know what I'm speaking of, mm. uh, could actually result in a cascading effect when AAA rated companies go bankrupt. And that's, I think, a key learning. When a small company goes bankrupt, it doesn't pull down another five along. Uh, mm. It completely challenges the entire financial system when a large corporate, which is supposedly AAA, yeah. uh, goes bankrupt. So coming back to your question, it has happened intermittently, mm. but not in a compressed fashion like in the last one year. Yeah. I think it's important for all of us to derive learnings from episodes, either mm. our mistakes or somebody else's mistakes. I think if you can do that, uh, then it's, uh, it's worth having done the mistake in the first place.